Can okay, you I can see you. Yes. Can you see me? Yes. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> I just forgot about the delay and it was like, can you see me? One, two, three. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, we can start. So welcome to your podcast, Just Gente. Today is a very special day because today is the first podcast in full English. So I'm glad to have the research teacher, master in food science. Maybe here I have a question. Doctor in food science, traveler, runner, food lover, guru of the lipid oxidation and antioxidant activity and person who taught me the son of the elephant in a try to teach me Thai. Dr. Ketinon Kitty Pompitaya for the friends get. How are you, my friend? <laughs> I'm fine. Oh, is that a sound effect? <laughs> yes, just for the beginning and oh, for the end of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for the nice introduction. And I'm yeah. so glad to join you today. Yes, today, by the way, <laughs> we got some problems, people. Uh, you don't know this, but uh, uh, our schedules were kind of different. <laughs> so I forgot completely that we just just 12 hours ahead and I thought like, yeah. oh get will reach me next day and oh no <laughs> it was yesterday but sorry and so thank you for can remember schedule. that we um Thailand and USA it's 12 hours different yes now I yes. promise get that I will uh buy a clock a wall clock <laughs> with the Thailand hour with the Thailand time sorry <laughs> to know exactly what time is in Thailand for the next time <laughs> By the way, I just remember that uh, song that you uh, um, showed me that day, the elephant song. When I tried to get a recommendation for Thai music, <laughs> you gave me a hit song. <laughs> what is that? I don't remember. Yeah, so one day I, I was trying to uh, get like new music from all around the world when we were in the U.S. And I and I told you that, like, hey, could you recommend me a song to, in, you know, uh, from Thailand? And you said, like, yeah, the elephant song. And then <laughs> I saw the song in, in YouTube and it was like a kid's song. <laughs> it was so, I, I can recommend you some more songs from Thailand now, if you want. Yeah, sure. I'm still uh, <laughs> trying to <laughs> discover new artists around the world. That would be great. Um, yeah, so, so what did clap, my friend? Uh, how are you? How is Thailand now that you are back home? Yes, <laughs> I'm kind of home sweet home. I'm glad that, uh, I finally got my PhD and came back to Thailand and start my work and, um, build my family. So yeah. I'm fine. I'm good. Nice. I, I said that I have a question here because I tried to figure out what is your master's degree. I never knew. And I and also oh. I never knew what was your bachelor's degree. I know that you are a food science really? a PhD. <laughs> yeah. I'm, my suspect oh. is that you are something related with agro industry, but I'm not sure about this. Oh, I did my bachelor, master, and PhD in food science. Great. All of them. Okay. Yes, awesome. So I don't oh. have any idea about other fields of studies. I only know about food science. <laughs> <laughs> Three times food science. That's yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. So your master and your bachelor, you did it in Thailand, right? In Thailand. And then yeah. you moved to US. Yes, I got it. So um, I got my master's degree in food science, and then I started working as a lecturer with my master's degree um, mm -hmm. at King Mong Food University. Um, and after I worked um, there for four or five years, I got a scholarship from the government to pursue my PhD um, uh, at University of Massachusetts. Yeah. Yep. So that's why you got there. So did you get a scholarship? That's what we government? met. Yeah, I know. I met you. I don't know how long were you in UMass I when I met there. you? I went to UMass at um in two thousand nine, and okay, 
been five years. I graduated in 2014. Yeah, so I met you in 2012 or 11, something like that. Yeah. So, I okay. Know. You were almost halfway of your PhD. When I when I went to UMass, you were uh, almost halfway or more than halfway yeah. of your PhD. Um, I think more more than half year. Yeah. Of my PhD. Yep, that was a really interesting uh, experience for me because uh, when I got into the lab, I was the only first, the only Latin American, of course. <laughs> but then I was surrounded by a lot of people from Thailand and uh, in China, right? <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> it was like melting in a completely new culture and uh and a culture that i didn't expect and it was really fun because you guys literally adopt me and i remember to uh launch with you and i remember like sharing food with you and i i remember that you were a really good uh chef i don't know why <laughs> mon always said that you didn't know how to cook but for me uh the food was delicious so <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's true or just mom was kidding with you, but uh, please let let me know now. <laughs> but I think, but I think you try many menus from me, right? I yeah. I think I cook, I cook some kind of Thai food for you, and we we had a kind of party at Doctor Decker's house, and yep. I cook many many food for that party. Yep. And but you can friend... say and you can tell me and you can tell me if it if it's good or not. <laughs> it was. <laughs> I, I my favorite was I don't remember the name of course because it was like twelve years ago. But uh my favorite was uh the the dish that you cook for Paki's party. So I don't remember the name. It I know that it's something is, that is that the pork? Is that the pork with the curry I think so yes with the sweet sauce I remember it was like a small things like this size like you put in the oven I guess and I, I would, it, those were really good I really like I, I ate like eight of those <laughs> and I was saying like <laughs> this is so delicious and mom was like no it's not and I said why are you so me with get it this is Perfect. I, I love it. <laughs> but I don't know if she was just kidding with you or if actually it was kind of different from Thai food. But um, my guess is that it was a real and authentic Thai food. <laughs> it might it might not um, taste like a real Thai food, but it may be good for people who never try Thai food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really good. I mean, um, I know that I'll still own you the visit. I hopefully go soon. You own me the visit to Mexico now. I'm in Philly, so probably it's easier for you to come to Philly someday. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, definitely I will go to Thailand, and I will be so glad if you cook more Thai food for me. But um, well, talking about this, so how was this part of your life like? Did you leave? around five six years in the u.s and then you came back home so what are those difference and what did you find different in thailand when you came back like culture shock or uh it was easy to got back to you know the, your routine in thailand or did you um i don't know felt like hard this change again I feel like um, when I live in the U.S., I live by myself alone, so I feel kind of grown up. Mm -hmm. I can live um, free, freely. I don't have to worry about my family, just enjoy my life and just do research and that's it. But um, once I came back to Thailand, so I live with my family. I think I like became a little child for my mom and dad again. 
Okay. And I have to be responsible for not only um learning, studying, but I have to do my job. I have to teach. I have to do research. So I don't have much time to to enjoy my life like what okay. I done in the US. Okay. Kind of. Mm -hmm. I know. Did you get back to Bangkok? So are you living in Bangkok now, right? No, no, I don't live in Bangkok. I live in Prasimbuli province. Um, that's okay. in the east, eastern of Thailand. Okay, okay. So, mm -hmm. wow. Well, my, my Thailand geography is not good. <laughs> so that's closer to which country or the ocean or <laughs> where? <laughs> it's close. To Cambodia, if you know that. Okay, yeah, Cambodia. I know that. All right. Yeah. Okay, mm. close to the border or kind of like just is the reference Cambodia? <laughs> is it your reference or are you close to the border? No, um, kind of close to the border. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I, I remember that Lin went to Thailand and she went to Cambodia. So she went to visit you, right? So Lin, our friend. Who is that? Who is that? I don't I, I remember that she went, uh, I don't remember how many years ago, but. Uh, oh, you mean Lian? Yeah, Lian. Yeah, she went, right? And she went to Cambodia. Yeah. Mm, I'm not sure if she went to Cambodia, but she is coming here back to Thailand again soon. Oh, and really? he has, oh. yeah, he, he, she just emailed me. Mm. Yeah. That's nice. And she said that she has a plan to visit Cambodia if I'm, if I'm right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's really nice. I haven't seen Lee yet. Uh, here, but uh, yeah, that's great. Okay, well, more or less, I know where is your city now. Uh, I, I I thought for some reason that you lived in in Bangkok, but uh, the truth is that now you're a teacher. So <laughs> how was that? How was that experience being teacher? So I I know because we 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 spoke yesterday a little bit ab about this. I know that you didn't teach teach in the U.S. You gave some, what what would you say, like, some classes? Did you? And uh, I but, I took some I took some classes um in the US at UMass. No, yeah, but did you talk? I didn't give US? I didn't give a lecture okay. at okay. UMass. I just took a class as a student. Yep. At UMass, but now I when I back to Thailand I. I am a lecturer, so mm -hmm. um, what I love for this job is that um, I love teaching. My mom and my dad, they are both teachers, so I like grow up with this kind of environment. I have a lot of experience with um, teaching um, their students since I was young. So I love teaching, and that's why I love my job as a teacher. Um, but being a lecturer is not only um, giving a lecture in the class. Mm -hmm. um, you have to do research. You have to um, do um, academic services. Um, you have to do kind of paperwork. You have to design the curriculum for students. You have to do many things. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of a lot of work yeah. for, for a lecture. Mm, but I, I, so far, so good. I think I, I, I my job. Yeah. It's something that I said to my friends that are teachers, um, that I, it's something that I really admire of, of you guys because um, it's really hard. I tried when I, actually uh, finish, finish my, my master's degree. And of course you do it on, in um, 
uh, I guess, ma master's and bachelor degrees. I did it in high school, but anyways, it was hard. <laughs> and it's a lot of things to do with like grading exams, is like know what exactly are you going to teach the next day or for the next two, three days. And uh, uh, one, th one thing that I told you yesterday is like, it's like 20 people just watching you and judging you. <laughs> like, why are you telling me now? <laughs> it's like, ah, and, you know, it's like keeping attention of those, you know, of these uh, students is really hard. So uh, I, I really, I really admire people that teach because it is really a hard uh, profession for me. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I love that when I see my student in the first year, mm -hmm. they are they are like um someone that like different from when they graduated from the fourth year. Yeah. So I love seeing them change their personality, change their um knowledge and turn to be a person that's ready to go for their life after they yeah. graduated. Yeah. So that's my happiness of being a lecturer. Yep. What are the classes? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, it's a high responsibility because, uh, you know, you always remember school by the teachers that you have, right? So uh -huh. if you had a bad teacher, you will remember it as a bad teacher. And I, I didn't learn anything, right? And a good teacher that does not uh, teach you what, what what is the class about, also he gave, gave you something else. Uh, you will remember that teacher with, uh, you know, like, like oh, uh, my teacher actually gave me a good advice or something that she or he said is, um, uh, had a really big importance on my life. I remember one teacher that I had in um, high school uh, that probably was not the best uh, teacher in the way that his class was easy. Uh, it was like programming class, but something that he told me once in the hallway, always, um, I always remember that that phrase that he, he, he told me told me at that point. And I remember him as a good teacher because he got, um, you know, uh, the confidence to come with me and say and tell me like, hey, uh, I guess that you should do this for instead of what are you doing right? So I, I, I don't want to get into details, but basically he told me like, you don't, you don't have to memorize everything and mm -hmm. put it into exam, it's uh, better if you understand deeper why are you putting in the exam? Because I was mm -hmm. a good, good student, but he was mm -hmm. right. I was trying to memorize everything. And sometimes mm -hmm. I didn't understand, but it was like, oh, this, the book says this, so I'm going to mm -hmm. recording this on my mind and I will put it on the exam. And mm -hmm. when he told me that, I start to analyze more the information that I was reading. So it, it was a good advice. So that, that makes mm -hmm. a good difference between a teacher, a good teacher and, you know, that gives, gives you something that you can apply for your daily life. Yeah. yeah. So what, what is the most challenging thing about teaching for you? Challenging thing is that you have to update things your knowledge every day because um in this day um students they can access knowledge from website from google from anywhere so being a lecturer you have to keep yourself updating so that you can have something more to teach your students yeah i think that's my challenge for being a lecturer. Okay. Something that I, I like to ask, and um, sometimes I save this for the end, but I would like, I would like to ask you now, uh, mm -hmm. how do you keep creative to teach? So I know that probably you 
teach this class for years. But as you said, you have to be updated, right? And in somehow mm -hmm. generations change and you have to mm -hmm. keep their attention in different ways. So how do you keep creative at, at the time that you are teaching? Yeah, yeah, your question is good. Um, Students, they, they change in like this year of students and another year of students. They are different, so you have to adjust yourself, adapt yourself according to your students. Mm -hmm. uh, lately, my students, they are like, they don't focus on what I'm teaching. So I have to find a way to get their attention, to, to study, to learn, to to concentrate on what I'm teaching. So, and it's kind of another challenge for myself. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you cannot be the same for each group of students. Mm -hmm. You have to adjust yourself according to your students. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's kind of fun and challenge. <laughs> Yeah, and I think it's kind of refreshing, right? Because uh, uh -huh. in the same way, your students can keep you updating about what is outside of the class. Uh -huh. Is uh -huh. uh, yeah. Otherwise, it's like more like you know, like I I got some teachers in college that they were teaching the same class for years, and they were just standing there without saying anything or trying to not involve with the students. And just like saying like this, 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 okay, the exam tomorrow. <laughs> and it's like even what? you teach the same thing, even you teach the same subject, the same course, but different students you have to teach in different way. Because yeah. the students are different. Yeah. They have they don't have the same background, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Also, technology plays a huge role now, right? So probably yeah. in our times, technology yeah. were not that uh, accessible for everyone. And now you have everything on your cell phone. Uh -huh. So, yeah. So I yeah. guess that those are tools that actually you work with, right? You say that you use them for your classes to prepare your classes, but uh, also I think you apply that for, for your class, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. So now, <laughs> Let's talk about science. This is your science? final exam. Get. <laughs> is it time? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. uh, yeah, we got some technical problems, <laughs> distance and internet, but we are back. <laughs> oh my God. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. So, yeah, actually, we have some delay, right? We were talking about this. So mm -hmm. if you see the YouTube video and you see like why uh, they are uh, taking so, so long to answer is because we have some delay and it's, you know, the distance <laughs> It's like a ocean between us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we were talking, we were talking about uh, the papers that, uh, that you wrote. I found them really interesting. So I would like to start first. Uh, asking you, like, um, I found that research, I, I'm going to talk about a little, bit, a little bit about Mexico and how uh, we do research. And uh, mm -hmm. because I find it really similar, but you will tell me if, it's, if it is or not. Um, so we, in Mexico, we took a lot of Asian, you know, like plants or Asian products uh, from the pre-Hispanic uh, era. And we tried to get them back and made an application for these products in, you know, the, in, in the nowadays. So uh, I saw that in Thailand also, you have a lot of this traditional medicine and a lot of biodiversity as in Mexico. And uh, so this is the 
common thing about research in Thailand, like taking like these uh, traditional products or traditional herbs to study them and try to find an application for food or pharmaceutical industry? I think it's um, common for every country um, to um, nowadays they try to like to use the byproduct from from agriculture from food um, to make use of um, it as the most efficiency um, in order to um, reduce the waste and to increase the um, value of this agriculture um, and According to the research funding agency in Thailand, they kind of have a policy to give funding for for the researcher that um, you should focus on some kind of um, specific thing like um, waste utilization and application. So um, according to my um, PhD research, I work with the lipid oxidation in the vegetable oil. So I try to find a research um, problem that relate that could relate to my um to my expertise. Mm -hmm. I would say. <laughs> yeah, so about lipid oxidation. So I try to find um the the antioxidant from raw material that we have in Thailand and apply it in um, oil and study their activity as antioxidant to um, inhibit to retard the lipid oxidation mm -hmm. kind of yeah it's really interesting because uh, I found that uh, usually when we talk about antioxidants uh, especially in Mexico, we use them as function, functional ingredients and something to add to the food to increase the nutritional, uh, you know, facts. And um, so, but but you gave me three different views of how to apply the antioxidant activity and the antioxidants in food science. That was great. So one is as ingredients. Uh, the other vision or the other view that I saw in your papers is like the protective action for oils. And a third view, it's like mixing them to increase the oil stability for process, for different process. In this case, uh, the, the paper is about frying. So that's really great that you have this three different views of the antioxidant activity. So I would like to start with the basic stuff. So what is an antioxidant? What is that? What's I lost it. an antioxidant? Yeah, yeah, don't worry. I know that we have the delay <laughs> in the internet. <laughs> the antioxidant, what is that? Yeah, what's, what, what's an antioxidant or yeah. Oh, what what's antioxidant? Um, it's a kind of compound <laughs> <laughs> that help help in delaying the oxidation. As the name anti is like anti is retard, like oxidant is like compound um that help retard oxidation. So the oxidation is the reaction that um, have impact on food quality like especially in the oil it will cause um, lancidity of the oil so we don't want our vegetable oil to get rancid so we add the antioxidant as a food additive to help protect our food from lipid oxidation 
I know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really important. It's, uh, uh, but we have a lot of compounds. Actually, um, what we actually study from antioxidant is more like in this case that you uh, are using like natural compounds or natural plants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, what we use more is like the extraction, right? So yeah, yeah. So um, well, you already mentioned what is the importance of the antioxidant activity uh, with the uh, all oxidation, but uh, what would you think? Or what is the real characteristics that made a, an antioxidant a good antioxidant? So how do you think that, oh, this plant or this, uh, I don't know, this fruit or yeah. this compound will be a good antioxidant? Yeah. Yeah. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard to find a good the good one, the good source of for uh, antioxidants. That's why we have to do research. Um, but when I start, uh, I will start from um, like um, some raw material that you can obviously see the color. Uh, so the color of the raw material like um, purple, it means that um, those raw material may contain an anthocyanin and anthocyanin is a kind of antioxidant that's one of things that you can notice like when I work with the rice bran do you know rice bran it's mm -hmm. kind of um, a layer that coat outside of the rice okay yeah so Thailand is a country of rice so we have many kinds of rice in Thailand, uh, different species of rice. And um, we focus, we, we study about the uh, pigmented rice. So the rice that have color. Okay. And we try to extract kind of um, that those compounds, those, those pigments from the rice bran and study their activity as the antioxidant. Yeah. Or um, another way to to find if it's a good antioxidant is that um, it's a food that people uh, consume for a long time, long time ago, and they claim that these kind of foods are good for your health. So it might have kind of antioxidant activity. So you have to like do screening research to study their antioxidant activity. Yeah. So it's not easy to find a good one. Yeah. And the source too. So um, usually in research, we try to find like some, we can say substrate that could be a waste of some process, right, to get these antioxidants, to make to make the extraction more with more profit, right? Because uh, if you yes. if, if we use like uh, I don't know, a, this is an example. If we use a berry that we can see the color, right, the the purples and the reds with the antioxidants, and uh, and we said, oh, of course, this has antioxidants, right? But we use oh. berries for food. Right, we sell yeah. the berries at yeah. the supermarket. We use berries yeah. in cakes and whatever. So it's mm. not easy to take these berries to extract the antioxidants and put this antioxidant in a different thing, right? Mm. Like in mm. an ingredient mm. or uh, mm. a medicine or something. So mm. you have to be super creative because one of your papers is about like getting the seeds of a fruit that the name yeah. is Macmao, right? Macmao, uh, yes. Yeah. And, and the seed is actually a waste of the industry of Macmao. So I don't know if you want to talk about this. Yeah, it's the same idea as when you try to um, use the grape seed. Do you think about grape? Uh, when yep. you think about grape, do you, you use the grape for wine making, wine. right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And there are a lot of ways from um, industry, like the uh, pomex, right? 
and right. uh, seeds from the grapes. And finally, they find the uh, grape seed is not a waste anymore because it contains um, really effective antioxidant compound from the grape seed. And they can add value to the seed and it's not a waste. It's kind of another um, valuable compound, right? So um, mm -hmm. I think that way, in the same way for the fruit that we have in Thailand. So we have mak mau. Mak mau is um, a kind of, it looks like a peppercorn. Okay. Can, have you ever seen the peppercorn? It's like. Yeah. <laughs> How do you can describe it for the people? Small, Go ahead. Small, yeah. <laughs> small fruit <laughs> like yeah like grape and like peppercorn and it tastes sweet and sour and okay. um when it's right it has a red color and when it turns to um, mature it turns to be more purple okay yeah and it tastes sweeter so um thai people um especially in the northeastern of thailand um where they grow this fruit. Uh, mm -hmm. So they usually make uh, food from this kind of fruit. And so there, there are seeds um, mm -hmm. as a waste from this industry. So I think maybe there's something interesting from the seeds like um, we found an um, interesting compound from the grape seed, right? So I yep. think maybe we can find something interesting from mak mau seed as well. So the way that you can figure out if it contains a component, active component, so you have to extract it from from the seed using different kind of solvent. Yeah, that's the idea of this paper. Yeah. And there's uh, more um, layers on this because uh, we we talked about like what is a good antioxidant, right? And you said like, well, to know if something can have like this, uh, if something can have can have this uh, antioxidant activity, uh, it's the color mm -hmm. one of the clues that we can get, right? Like visual clues. But yeah. uh, there's also other factors that can. And, and that should be taken, take right? Like the you mentioned something that is the ripeness, right? And the right, yes, yes, right, ripeness, yeah, degrees, and mm -hmm. the yes. cu cultivars, right? The the where this fruit is harvest or where it grows, so it depends mm -hmm. on the. I heard something, and this is a question that I I just want to confirm with you. That is, you are the expert. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, with some weather conditions as well, like when you, what is that region with lower rain rate? Uh, that actually helps to the plant to create more uh, polyphenolic compounds, right? That these polyphenolics mm -hmm. are the compounds that actually. Uh, that they they have the antioxidant yeah, activity. activity. Yes. yes. So th is this is this is this true or the I I think there is no exact rule that um what region what area will provide the uh, raw material that contain the good antioxidant activity. It kind of depends on many factors not only the the region the area it depends on the weather it depends on the soil it depends on the i don't know many kind of factors so there is there's no one rule yes for considering if it's going to be a good antioxidant source or not okay yeah that's why yeah. you have to study <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got this because when I read that you took different regions to get the Macmao fruit, I, I just remember yeah. that from my classes. It was like, oh, it's true. I remember that 
the sun, the sun hours, the water, the, the, the access to the water of the plant, mm -hmm. the soil and all those uh, things actually yeah. help helps or not to the uh, to get these uh, antioxidant compounds in the fruit. And something that I, I didn't uh, know exactly was the ripeness degree, but uh, you found something yeah. interesting. So I, I don't know if you want to talk about that. What did you find on this fruit about the antioxidant activity? Um, the ripeness. Um, so when we talk about Fruit ripeness. Um, when it so the fruit when it's young and it grow mature and then it ripe, mm -hmm. right? So uh, during this growth cycle of the fruit, um, that the biochemistry happen um, during that growth, like the pigment, like anthocyanin. Um, when the fruit is young, the color is green, right? So yep. the content of the anthocyanin is not that much, it's not that high. But once it grows to the mature stage, the anthocyanin content go, go to the higher concentration. Mm -hmm. So the antioxidant activity of um, this stage of fruit will will be higher than the younger stage. But mm -hmm. once it go grow to the more ripe, <laughs> the <laughs> anthocyanin may degrade it. So mm -hmm. the content of anthocyanin will decrease. So antioxidant activity decreases too. Yeah, yeah, this kind of thing. So different stage of um, maturity of the fruit um, affects the antioxidant activity. Okay. That's very interesting because you have to find the exactly point where the activity will be higher, right? Then you know that early stage or uh, late late stage in the fruit. That That's really awesome. And um, also, I mean, if this is not enough hard with this uh, now three layers that we are talking about, there's a fourth layer that we have to add into the uh, into the study of the antioxidant activity, right? And is um, the fractions that you get up to the solvent that you are using to get the yeah yeah. That there is yeah. there there that that's so great because um, so to to give some context, uh, you can do your extraction based on solvents, right? That you choose mm -hmm. and those solvents will extract different compounds up to the something that we call polarity, right? Yes. So, yes. so yeah, polyphenolic well, compounds. Yeah, for polyphenolic compounds is the group of compounds that um have antioxidant activity that we fo we focus. Um, but the polyphenolic compound has different polarity so that's why we have to study if um, this kind of raw material contain um, the polar or non-polar compound so we have to use different kind of solvents um, to extract the compound from the raw material so um, and to see if uh, for example in um, the case of mud mouse it contain more polar compound antioxidant. That why um, that's why we uh, when we extract um, using the ethanol, um, it has more antioxidant activity than the compound that we extract by using the hexane, which is a non-polar solvent. Yes. Yes. So, what did you observe on this? Or did you get more uh, antioxidant activity in the ethanol fraction or in the exon fraction? What is that? Oh, so what did you what did you get uh, about talking about the antioxidant antioxidant activity? Did you get more antioxidant activity in the ethanol fraction or in the yes. exon fraction? In in the ethanol fraction, then more than in the hexane extract. 
Yeah, usually, usually you get more antioxidant activity, right? When you use like a polar fraction instead of a non-polar yes. fraction. Yes, yes. That that's really weird because that 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 make me, makes me feel that my master's is not worth for anything <laughs> because I work with the exam fraction. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> There is a, a you, can talk about your, you can talk about your master thesis. Uh, no, this podcast is about you, Get. You are the star here. <laughs> <laughs> we can share a little bit of information about my master. But, uh, I studied uh, oil. Came from uh -huh. an Asian sea in Mexico that is not used like industrial applications. Uh, it's more used like for making traditional food and traditional candy. Uh -huh. uh, mm. But it the same, it looked that it has a lot of antioxidant activity because the content of uh, uh, tocopherols are, is high. So that's why mm. we decided to study the antioxidant activity. But we're not talking about me, so we're talking about your reason. That's interesting. You, you add more interesting um, topic like for for different kind of raw material, they may contain different kind of compounds. Yep. Like in your case, the, it might have more non-polar compounds. That's why you found that the hexane fraction is more antioxidant activity. But in my case, the magmosy, it contain more polar compounds. That's why you found the antioxidant high in the ethanol extract. So yep. different raw materials will contain different polarity of compounds. Yep. Also, something that we can add to these layers or complex is that um, also you have to choose your fraction based on what do you want to do with your compound, right? Yeah. Because if you want to, and 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 this is something that. Uh, actually, this is a good question that I didn't think about before. So if you want to add these compounds to protect a system that we are talking about this uh, now. Oh, but, yeah. uh, yes, for example, well, you have to choose compounds that fit into the, the non-polar right? compound. Exactly. Yes. Because the solubility. The solubility. Right. right. Mm. So mm. that's really important to have the whole view of what do you want to do with your with your mm -hmm. fraction, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, this is the question. So the, that I didn't think about before is that in in the next paper, you you used a fraction into oil, right? So what compounds did you use? Because I don't remember exactly to protect the oil. Or we can talk about this a little bit later. So let's. Let's keep talking about this, that because <laughs> okay. if not, we are gonna be jumping. But uh, I'm, I'm just gonna keep this question on mind, at the top of my mind. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. At at the end of the paper, you did something that I found, you know, really uh, smart, and it's because when we do research and this paper, that I'm, I feel that it's more focus on development of a functional, functional ingredient. Uh, sometimes that we don't do is evaluating the characteristics of the ingredient, right? And you did a color assay because color is important for con the consumer acceptance, right? So how did you yeah. evaluate this? And, and First is that it's something that you do usually in your research is like thinking like, okay, if, if I'm going to apply this in a food, so what are the organoleptic characteristics that I want to keep or that will be good for the consumer? And how do you do the color aside? You mean the color measurement? Yeah, so what, what is important in these compounds in, th in terms of color? So what it's what the consumer rather to have in these ingredients in, in based in color. So they, they, they like like more like bright colors, non color. Oh, you mean you're talking about the basin gas, uh -huh. right? Yeah, right. The basin gas. So I'm still thinking about the magma seed. <laughs> ah. <laughs> That's why I 
I'm confused. Oh, no, no, no. So, so you talk about another paper, the baking grass extract, right? Yeah, but all, also in the magma seed, right? You did that? Uh, let me check. I have my, I have my, I have my paper here. <laughs> So in the oh, baking right. class, you did in the baking class. In the baking class, class yes. Okay, um, well, the let... color of the extract. Yeah, the we can talk about that. The color of the extract is green. Yes. It, the, the color is green. So once I try to apply in the oil system, it has a problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, the color of the oil turns to be green. So it might not be acceptable for consumer. Um, yeah, that's one point um, that is a limitation of using the natural antioxidant. It's the same as the rosemary extract. Um, the rosemary, you know, right? Um, it has a green color as well. If you yeah. apply it at a high concentration, it might have a kind of effect on the color of the fruit. So it's a kind of limitation for natural um, antioxidants. But you can solve the problem by um, extract the color out, like strip, strip the, the chlorophyll out of the extract. But um, you have to uh, accept that uh, some kind of antioxidant compound my loss during the extraction as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is, yeah, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, this is, this is in your paper about the Beijing grass. Um, that it, it's actually good because um, this is the other view that uh, we, we were talking about before about the protecting, you know, the food, the high um, oil content food that food that has a lot of well, not, not just oil, but like these compounds that can be easily oxidated by different factors, right? Um, mm -hmm. Actually, talking about this, uh, I saw that you, uh, for this paper, you evaluate two different, like, um, um, two different methods. I matrix. compare with the thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so method you, I use the uh, soy oil oil, right? and pork lard, yeah. So uh, yes, I use before, two different systems. Yep. The soybean oil and the pork lard. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So before talking so about this, oil, no, go ahead, please. <laughs> <laughs> why, why, why did why did you choose these two, right? So what why these, these two, two right? systems? Yes. 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 So the soybean oil, it contains like um, more unsaturated fatty acid, right? So it's um, more sensitive to the oxidation. And for the pork lard, it's like, it's more saturated fatty mm -hmm. acid. Yep. So, but we, we both, we, we use both kind of, oil it's one from plants and one from animal so yeah. i try to to apply the antioxidant in both systems mm -hmm. yeah yep. and we found and we found that the baking grass extract it works well it can help um retard the oxidation in both systems mm -hmm. but when we compare when we compare with the synthetic antioxidants like um, DHT and TBHQ, um, yeah, it's not, I mean, the natural extract, the dating grass extract is not as good as the synthetic one. But mm -hmm. at least it can help in um, retard the oxidation yep. in the oil. Uh, this yeah. is really important because uh, this kind of research are looking for more natural compounds instead of the synthetic mm -hmm. compounds to avoid the oxidation. Mm -hmm. So I want to start with mm -hmm. something, uh, you know, the basic thing here. So, um, so we know that ab about the oxidation in food and this um, change in the composition, but 
Uh, what are the factors that promote the lipid oxidation for this kind of high oil content products? Mm, many factors like um, the light. Yes. The light can accelerate the oxidation. Um, the oxygen. Oxygen is the very important thing. And uh, metal, like iron, can um, accelerate the oxidation rate. And what else? You can help me. I can help you. I, I know about heat. And yeah. Oh, yes, heat. This is heat. So I will copy and paste light heat and metals. And I don't remember another one. <laughs> yeah, heat, metal, oxygen, light, oh, oxygen. and um, radicals. OK, yeah, yeah. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. you're the teacher. I'm learning again. <laughs> yeah, this is really funny for the people that is listening to uh, this uh, podcast. Uh, I remember. Uh, when I was when I was kid, uh, the lace, the chips, uh, they mm. came in a clear bag. You know, in that mm. way you can see the product. It was more like a, like a strategy of the company, right? Mm. Uh, see the see the chips through the bag, and you will buy it. Mm -hmm. But mm. the scientists found that that accelerates the oxidation in Actually, mm. because the light got through the bag and started the lipid mm. oxidation in the in the chips, mm. right? That mainly are oil and potato. <laughs> so, uh, so they decide to mm. make about the potato. Yeah. So they decide to do these bags, uh, you know, like, like um, what you can say, like with no. That, that don't, don't allow the light to get into the bag, into the product, right? Yeah, so, and, and they that, also add the uh, they also add the nitrogen gas into the bag of yes. the potato chip, right? To right. get rid of the oxygen. Yeah, and that's why you see the bag is like a balloon, <laughs> <laughs> and you think that is full of chips. That fill of not. nitrogen. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's it's full of lies, literally. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a bad joke in English. Oh my gosh, what I'm doing! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, so that, that 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 those are the the main factors, right? That promote the oxidation in, um, especially food with high content of uh, lipids, right? So I, I don't want to say oils anymore. I, I, Especially, especially the unsaturated lipids. Yeah, right? lipids, exactly. So, uh, well, you explained very really well about the two systems that you test for this paper. I have a, a question because pork lard for me is solid. So yeah. this is more like a technical question for you. <laughs> because I saw that you strip the oil, but I don't know in, if it's okay if it's like a secret of Dr. Get. No, but... it's not, but it's because <laughs> I, I do a research in Thailand and the temperature in Thailand is very high. That's why the lot in Thailand is not like a solid. <laughs> it's liquid okay, that's my question. <laughs> yeah, because I couldn't think about that. Like, okay, the way that I, I, never that seen, I know the I never seen that in the US. It is? Have um, you ever seen that in the US? I need to cook more with pork lard, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> For me, is that yeah, yep. white, semi-solid, you know? Mm. But, yeah, so that, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, because I know that you, because I saw you doing this in, in Amherst, that like stripping the oil is has take basically the oil through, through a the, column, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's why I couldn't imagine how you get to the past like with the literally line, grease the <laughs> through, the, <laughs> through the columns. So. <laughs> yeah, it's liquid. You you should come to Thailand. That's why. So mm -hmm. you will know that the temperature in Thailand is not that cold. Yeah. Yeah. 
that right. that that's the reason. Yeah, it makes sense. Makes sense. <laughs> Completely same. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting. I'm waiting for you coming. Yeah. <laughs> so um well uh we, we talked about uh, like uh did you try both systems, one with more um insaturated fatty acids and with more saturated fatty acids. Does it make a difference, this quantity of fatty acids, if it's more saturated or more insaturated in food? What's the difference? What, why, why did you choose to uh, test both systems with these characteristics? Mm, as I said, that the unsaturated fats are more sensitive to the oxidation. So I expect that the concentration that we use for the egg tag might need only the low um no it might need a higher concentration of the egg tag to um, protect the oil with the unsaturated fatty acid and maybe in the case of the pork lard with the high concentration of saturated fatty acid it might need lower concentration of the egg tag Okay. Yeah. So I I try I I try to find a different um concentration of the extract that needs for both systems. Okay. Yeah, that 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 makes sense. Um, because uh, yeah, that that's the only thing that I knew about is that they were more st stable to the oxidation, the saturate ones. Um, <clears throat> actually, um, there's another question that I just think about uh, in terms of thermal processes is better to get oils with higher saturated fatty acids instead of unsaturated fatty acids in terms of oxidation and yeah okay actually I, yeah. I think that you mentioned that in the in the last paper right yes yeah. are you going to move to another paper no 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 I, actually I'm, I'm just remembering but uh but uh, I, I just thought about that. Yeah. No, actually, I, I would like to question. I, I would like to, uh, yeah, to ask uh, about like we 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 were talking about the uh, antioxidant activity and how to use these antioxidants to protect these food systems, right? But actually, what the oxidation does in foods and why we are, um, uh, yeah, what 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 are the effects specifically in lipid oxidation that can cause something in the food or why we're protecting the food against oxidation. Why do we need to protect the liquid food from oxidation, right? Yes. Yes, because um, first, the oxidation causes the lancidity, the bad smell that people don't accept it. That's why we don't need the oxidation. This is the first reason. And another reason is that the oxidation will cause um, some kind of compound that that could be toxic, could be harmful for your health. So that's why people try to protect the lipid food from lipid oxidation. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, I think that it's really interesting and it was refreshing to read again about food science <laughs> after many years uh i would like to close the podcast with this question that I, is usually something that i do with my my guest it's um uh in science sometimes people think that we are not creative for some reason right as a musician or as a writer or as you know, a singer or something more related with humanistics or art. But in fact, we are. So uh, how do you keep creative in research? And what if you have like an overcome, how did you solve this creative block? You know, like, like I'm blocked. I, I don't know what to do with this because the result is not what I expect. Or I don't know exactly what to do. What is your... What do you do to overcome this creative uh, block in your mind? That's a good question that good comes to right to that come right to my heart because um, I I I think that 
I'm not creative enough to find um, the good topic of the research. I cannot. I think I cannot find the yeah the good research for myself that okay. I'm interested. Yeah. Um. So how to make yourself creative? Mm -hmm. So it's like how to find a problem. So you have to go outside of your area of your room. You have to go outside to see people, to talk with the industry, to find what they have, like for their problem. So we can um, we can use our knowledge to help them, and we can work together to um, do a research to solve that problem. That's how I try to find my research for myself. But because I cannot, I cannot think about what kind of research I should do. <laughs> That's a problem for myself. That's why I told you that I don't like doing research because I cannot think what should I do. Yeah. Okay. 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 And. <laughs> And do you have any activities to overcome a, cre a creative block? Like, I don't know, do you like, I, I saw that you like running, but I don't know if you do uh, something else that it could be your refugee to find the answers or something that you cannot find the answer. I think the best way for myself to, uh, to make myself have creativity is that to make you my empty like to have a rest, to be with yourself, to be quiet, to live in a quiet environment, or to meditate, to do meditation <laughs> kind of thing. That, that's my way. Okay. <laughs> Maybe people have different kind of ways, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. No, it's okay. I mean, it's great. Actually, uh, I just remember that you, the only time when when i did yoga was when you helped me right yeah so yeah, yeah. and it's very relaxing so i completely mm -hmm. understand that that will be a great idea to you know to find the answers that you cannot find in in the lab so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah perfect so Cupcoon, my friend Cupcoon for this yeah. podcast <laughs> you're Thank welcome you. Thank you for it's accepting. It's always the good to talk to you. Yeah, and no, always good to talk with you. I miss it so much. Um, hopefully, did you like? And well, did you like? <laughs> I like. Perfect. So hopefully, you are down to uh, do uh, another podcast in the future. We <laughs> still <laughs> we still have one paper really interest interesting about like oil blending that I didn't want to, you know, like get a lot of information on this podcast. We mm -hmm. actually reviewed two, two of your papers, but this there is really interesting. So if you are down, I would like to record a new podcast about, I think, talking I about think, this. I think you better, you better ask your viewers if they are interested in our talk or not. Yeah, they are. <laughs> They are right, people. You are interested to hear about more about all oxidation and antioxidants and research <laughs> in Thailand. So that's great. Thank you, and uh, and I hope to see you here soon. And and also uh, we'll just keep in touch again. <laughs> yeah. People doesn't know, but when I was working, and this is something that I will to share, is that uh, remember when I was working back in Mexico in the pharmaceutical industry. And yes. we had this call because you were in UMass and we didn't have this difference of time. Uh, you were still in UMass and I call you in my lunch time <laughs> because the cafeteria was so full of people that I couldn't see. It was like I was taking lunch in the car and I said, oh, we could all get. <laughs> that was great. Good, good it time. It's a problem of time. Yes, exactly. Yes. Well, thank you so much. And... Thank you, people, for watching and listening to this podcast. Uh, you can find more content in Spotify and YouTube. Uh, follow up us in our social media, as just hinted, in YouTube and in Spotify. And 
Uh, I'm promising that this is not going to be the first uh, podcast in English. There will be more with Get and with more people that want to um, come and and share whatever you want to talk about. And um, and thank you. This is going to be the last episode of the season. So I hope you can follow us in the next season uh, with more podcasts in English and in Spanish. So thank you. Thank you, Get. And I will see you soon. Thank you, thank you for watching. Bye, everyone. Bye.